Hello, welcome to vlog number 14. On screen now are the timings for the video in case you want to skip to the parts that you're interested in. First though, a little update about what's been going on and a little workshop update. I have new windows. My old windows had rotten window frames. They were unopenable. They had no window sills to shed the rainwater and they were single glazed so they let in a lot of noise from the nearby road. After removing the old glazing beads and the glass, the old frames were held in place with a few screws and some adhesive. To make space for the new windowsill, we had to grind away the render at the bottom using this huge and very heavy grinder belonging to my uncle who I was kind of apprenticed to for the day. He's a professional window and door fitter and I don't really know what I'm doing. And then I can just check that the windowsill fits and it didn't quite, so I had to do a bit of chiseling and then it fitted like a glove. I can check it's sitting level, and it is. I added a generous bead of clear silicon to seal it against the old render, and some under the window seal too, and we added some packers underneath just to lift it up. And because I'd already framed out the inside of the walls many months ago, I'd made it a little bit awkward to get the window into the opening, but we found that pushing the window into the opening from the inside and pushing the window sill in place from the outside worked nicely. A couple of Torx head frame fixings through the sides of the frame going into some brown wall plugs in the thermalite block wall holds everything securely, and I can then seal up the outside with more silicon. You get a couple of plastic clips that push in place for the glass to sit on and then the glazed unit can be installed. Spraying a bit of soapy water onto the glass makes it much easier to fit the beads in place that will hold the glass. A couple of days later I made up some window boxes using some scraps of moisture resistant MDF and these are similar construction to what we did recently on the van conversion project. So this box fits into the opening nicely and then I can rip down some thin pieces of plywood to make a mitered frame which I can pin to the front edge of the box. I gave them a coat of primer and a couple of coats of paint and then I can add silicon around the inside of the mitered frame and push it in place. And I sealed it on the outside too with some decorator's caulk. Finally I'm going to add some reflective film onto the windows. I had this on the old windows too and it just means that no one will be able to see into the workshop from the outside but I can still see out so it's just a security measure really. After spraying on lots of soapy water you can just offer it up and I used a plastic tool to push out all of the water and any air bubbles. I got the reflective film from Amazon and I'll link to it in the description box if anyone's interested in buying some. And now they're looking nice and tidy, really chuffed with my new windows. Not only do they cut out a lot of noise from the nearby road when they're closed, but opening them up means that I can get good airflow through the space to get rid of dust and paint fumes. And that was the main reason for changing them really. They're only cheap, basic PVC windows. I think the price worked out at about £170 for both windows, but they're perfect for what I need. And a huge thanks to my uncle Kev for fitting them and showing me what to do. I learned loads. Next, a bit about what's coming soon to the channel. I finally have a router table, which you might be able to see in the background. This is one of those projects that I've been meaning to do for ages. I won't say too much more about it here though, because it's all covered in a future video coming soon to the channel. I also made this drawer unit to sit underneath the router table, and I'm learning recently that you can never have enough drawers in the workshop. I didn't film that one because A, it's not that interesting, and B, sometimes it's just nice to make things without filming, but I'll show you what I've got inside. The idea was to have all of the router table and table saw accessories in the top drawer so that they're close to hand. And you can see here I've got my router bits. These are all just sitting in some holes that I've drilled into some 3x2s. Then I've got the router table and table saw stuff and my table saw insert plates. And I had a bit of extra space so I put my rotary tool bits in here along with the rotary tool itself. In the bottom drawer I have my half inch router and all of the accessories that go with it. And on the right my Hikoki M8V2 quarter inch plunge router. The camper van conversion project is still being worked on. Yesterday we started making the upper cabinets. I think the next episode though is going to be mainly about the ceiling and some boxing in. More videos coming soon. Other than that, my next projects are that I need to demolish a lean-to on the side of our house. 
Not sure whether that'll be a member exclusive video or whether to put it on the main channel yet. And I've designed some outdoor sofas that I want to build to put in that space instead. Somewhere nice to chill out in the sun. And I'm considering building a pergola over it too, but I need to seek approval for that from the boss of the house. I also need to make an outdoor dining table to fill this huge patio space that's been sitting empty ever since we moved in. And that's been on the to-do list for ages too. But yeah, summer is coming and it's time to make the garden a nice place to be. Recommended viewing. This is the part where I talk about some YouTube channels or videos that I've been enjoying lately. Small Space Creation is a UK based channel featuring a mixture of projects and workshop tip videos. I particularly like the tips about making your own MFT bench dogs and track saw clamps. And more recently a really good video documenting how he made a large Lego man. Great content, good thumbnails, he's doing everything right so please go over and subscribe and show your support. I've talked about the Bish Bash Bosch channel a few times in previous videos, a channel by Stu who is an all-round top bloke. Usually he does a lot of really good product reviews of tools and accessories and some clever solutions not only for workshop use but also site-based stuff. But more recently he's put together a couple of what I consider to be real next level furniture projects. The first, a wooden version of the Wassily chair designed by Marcel Breuer. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And then more recently, a coffee table to sit in front of it. Again, with inspiration from Marcel Breuer, but with a Mondrian style top. Really interesting to see how he tackled the joinery on both projects, particularly the chair, which just looked really complicated to me. And also the woven twine upholstery on the chair. I'm not sure if upholstery is the right word, but anyway, definitely worth a watch and a subscribe if you haven't already. Also been enjoying Frank Williams' channel, another UK-based channel. Frank recently picked up a second-hand SIP 01332 table saw, which is really similar to mine actually, and he's been putting a lot of work into restoring it and setting it all up and giving it some love. But his channel is usually focused on project videos like his recent faux live edge using a scaffold board and resin table. I'm not usually a fan of resin stuff personally, but it was really interesting seeing how he did it and I felt a bit sorry for him with the amount of sanding that he had to do on that one. And finally, Loghouse Farm, a Canadian channel. I think the first video I saw of his was about converting a barn on a property that he had just recently moved to into a workshop. His videos are really fast paced and dynamic, which I personally really like. Loads of info in a short amount of time. He also recently did a cat tree project and you know that I love my pet projects so that was cool to see and it instantly made me want to make another cat tree actually because I think I can do a much better job now than I did several years ago. Anyway please do check out all of the channels mentioned and subscribe if you like them. Links down below in the description box. Tool Talk. I've got a few new bits, obviously the Trend T7 router which I showed in my slab flattening video which I was reasonably happy with aside from the poor dust extraction and the amount of time it takes to stop spinning when you turn it off. It's certainly got plenty of power. Then there's all of the new router table stuff which I'll cover in a future video. I got a braided plastic sleeve for my dust hose, I got this on eBay, really pleased with this as the vacuum hose no longer snags on track saw rails. It was definitely worth the £8 that I spent on it. The size of the stuff that I bought, just so you know, is the 28 to 47 millimeter, and it fits a regular vacuum hose perfectly. It's got quite a lot of stretch to it across its width, but obviously the more that you stretch it, the longer length you'll need to buy, so bear that in mind if you want to buy some. And I'll leave some links down below in the description box. I've got a few new bits from Milwaukee too, and just for full disclosure, Milwaukee support my channel, but they don't know that I'm putting this segment in the video. Firstly, the M12 site radio, which has been a great accompaniment on the van conversion project. There has been much dancing to 90s R&B classics in between jobs. Also an M12 LED light, which is really handy. I actually use these a lot as video lights as they have a magnetic base, so I can attach them to my mobile camera stand thing for improved lighting. See? They also sent me a nice new hammer. and some flat bars or pry bars, which is really handy because I didn't have any of those. That's it for this one, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel and get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can find links to my YouTube channel membership and Patreon page in the description box below. Thank you for watching.